We started working with differential equations with sinusoidal inputs. And here's just an example is we can do this for any differential equation. We have a differential equation with a sinusoidal input. And the thing to remember about all cases is that the steady state solution is always going to be another sinusoid at the same frequency as the one we started with and some amplitude and some phase. So the general particular solution can be written as m cosine omega t plus phi, where m is the amplitude and phi is the phase. Now, m and phi, of course, are going to depend on the particulars of the differential equation. But notice that there's already information contained here, which is we already know that there's going to be another sinusoid, and it's going to be at the same frequency as the input. We're going to talk today about a method to uh, allow these computations of m and phi to be made uh, more easily than using the methods that we've already used. The concept that makes solution of sinusoidal responses much easier is something called the phaser. A phaser is a rotating vector. It's going to rotate clockwise in the complex plane. Let's start with the expression real part of e to the j omega t and think about what that means. e to the j omega t just means cosine omega t plus j sine omega t. When we take the real part of that, we're going to drop the imaginary part, and we just are left with cosine omega t. In other words, the real part of e to the j omega t is just a fancy way of writing cosine of omega t. We can also add in an amplitude and a phase where uh, we've added in m and phi here, and that just still means m cosine omega t plus phi. We can actually visualize this with this animation here. What you see here is a sinusoid that's uh, fluctuating up and down, and then what we're plotting here is the real part. In other words, uh, we have our, our vector that's rotating in the complex plane, and then if we take the real part, that's just a horizontal component, which is this sinusoid being traced out here. So you can think of this phaser real part, or sorry, the, uh, you can think of e to the j omega t as just being a vector that's rotating clock, counterclockwise in the plane. And then we're just taking the horizontal component of that, uh, of that vector. So we have a fancy way of writing m cosine omega t plus phi in terms of a vector in the complex plane. And one thing we can do is, if we know that this thing is always rotating at uh, a frequency omega, we can forget about the animating the rotation, and we can just think about m and phi. We can describe m and phi again in the complex plane. And what this lets us do is, it turns out this is very useful because, first of all, it makes it very easy to do take derivatives, and second, it makes it very easy to add different magnitudes and phases. Let's summarize. We introduced the concept of the phaser, which is the use of a complex exponential as a fancy way to write down a sinusoid, m cosine omega t plus phi. Here we use the real part of the complex exponential, which represents a vector that's rotating around in the complex plane. Since we're only interested in m and phi, we can just as easily just draw m and phi in the complex plane, and that's going to be a shorthand for the starting point of our vector that's going to be rotating around. How is this useful? We said it's useful for taking time derivatives and also for adding different sinusoids, which is the, the two main operations that we end up making when we solve for particular solutions. So again, this is all a method to make it easier for us to find the steady state solution for sinusoidal input to any differential equation.